In today's video, we're going to cover reflections in the post-process volume using Unreal Engine 5. So I have this scene here that I rendered out, and I rendered out multiple versions of it. One with the path tracer, one with lumen, one with ray tracing. If this is going over your head, this is basically trying to clean up the reflections in this little mirror ball, which is a very extreme example. Most of the time, you wouldn't have a mirror this blatantly in the scene. But if we're trying to get better reflections in Unreal, there's a couple things we can do. The first is that we need a post-process volume in our scene, so I have that right here. And you can just add one in your Place Actors panel into the scene and make sure that you have Infinite Extend Unbound checked. And then in the settings for your post-process volume, you can scroll down and you can find your global illumination and your reflection settings down here. Now, in general, one of the things I do recommend is that if you're using either Lumen or Ray Tracing, it's better to make sure that you're using the same system between your global illumination and your reflections. So let's just quickly demonstrate this. Right now, I am currently in Ray Tracing, but the default is Lumen. If I set my reflections to Lumen, and then I set my global illumination to Lumen right here, we can see we're getting a pretty good result. It doesn't look that bad, but the reflections aren't quite as good. But with Lumen, it is going to be the fastest on our computer. And we can see that right here with my frame rate. If I jump this back over to my ray trace settings, we can see that the frame rate is going to drop from around 70 frames to around 40 frames, but we're getting better reflections. So it's always worth asking, do we need performance or do we need quality of render? We're not going to go over global illumination settings. You can find this video, I think it's right here, in the corner on where I would adjust global illumination settings and how that might affect your scene. So I'm going to start by setting my method for reflections in Lumen and then go back to global illumination, Lumen, just like so. And if you ever want to use the Lumen reflection mode, the general consensus is that the best mode for it is going to be setting your ray lighting mode to hit lighting for reflections. And then on top of that, we can go in and adjust the quality if we need to. And if we bring this slider all the way down, we're really getting a lot more fuzziness in the shadows of our reflections over there. But if we bring the quality up higher, it's really sharpening up the details of this little light window gobo thing in our scene. So if you need to use Lumen, adjusting these settings to hit lighting for reflections is a good start. And then increasing the value as you need it and also making sure we select high quality reflections. We can see we're getting a little bit different of a reflection in that part of my frame as well. So with Lumen out of the way, we're pretty much limited to just these settings and it still doesn't look that bad. Like for a video game, this looks awesome. Let's kick it over to ray tracing now. So I'm gonna go over to ray tracing in my reflections and my global illumination. And now we're getting a much more different look. Now we're just gonna focus on the reflections right here. We can see in this mirror ball that we're getting a little bit of noise in this one section. On top of that, these shadows are pretty harsh. And if I go to my sequencer and I leave my camera, I can see that the shadows down here are a little bit softer. And if I scroll into that little mirror ball right there, we can see that we're getting a little bit of noise in the reflection of this chair. So let's go to my post-process volume again. And the first thing that we can notice if we go to my reflection settings is that there's going to be lots of settings for our ray trace reflections. In the post-process volume, let's activate every single one and now we can adjust the way reflections are being seen with the post-process volume. So the first thing is this max roughness slider. If we bring it down, it's going to basically say, what level of shininess are we going to include reflections on? So if we set this to zero, this is just going to turn black. This mirror ball is now not going to give us any reflections versus if we set this to a maximum value of one, if any material has a roughness value of one, it will still show reflections in our scene. So on average, I just set this value to one when I'm using ray tracing. Now, we also have our shadows, and this will give us a menu of hard shadows and area shadows. If I disable it, we're not gonna get any shadows in our reflection 
versus if I set my shadows to hard shadows, we get everything there. But like I said, these shadows down here are a little bit softer. So we can set this to area shadows and we're gonna get a little bit softer of shadows in our reflections. But there's one other thing that we should be aware of. This little glass ball I have down below is not showing in our reflection. So we can just check, turn on, include translucent objects and this is off by default because it is expensive as far as rendering but hey now we have a translucent object in our reflection now the number one thing that's going to affect the quality of your reflections is going to be your max bounces and samples per pixel inside your ray trace reflection settings problem is though is if we increase this value it's going to take a massive performance hit on your computer so if i were to set this max bounces to let's say two what's going to happen is that our frames are going to drop a little bit but now as light bounces around in the scene it's going to be hitting something so the ceiling for example is that we have light bouncing off the ceiling back into the mirror ball and then back to the ceiling so we can get that pattern of the the default checkerboard material Material there and if I set this back to one we're gonna lose that detail but if you're super far away from a reflection and a scene you can barely tell so this is a situation where you have to be selective on when you add more bounces let's go back into the scene right here and if I set the bounces to let's say four and then I take this mirror ball and I hold alt and I duplicate it, we're going to get bounces upon bounces upon bounces. And if you've ever put two mirrors next to each other, you're basically getting that like infinity effect, but it's not going to be infinity. Instead, it's going to be based on how many bounces you have in the post process volume. I'm going to delete that because that's a pretty expensive effect right there that we're going for. I'm going to go back to my post process volume and I'm going to set this back down to one. Now, if we're getting noise in our shadows down here, if we go to our samples per pixel in the post-process volume and set this to like four, it's gonna clean it up just a little bit. 16, or I can bump this up to 32, but if you look at my frame rate, it's also decreasing pretty dramatically. And if I were to set my max bounces to like two, it's really gonna slow down my scene. It is pretty much impossible to work with now. It's not real time. so. How do we adjust this? What if we want to render settings like this? Well, in these clips that I rendered, I use something called console variables. So if I reset this here to one and one, this is generally where I will work in Unreal Engine. But if I'm ready to render a scene and I want to have more samples in the reflections, we can add two console variables. So we'll hit the render button right here and we have this scene, we can go to our render settings and go to settings and console variables. We have this little tab right here, we can hit the plus sign and the console variables that you need to increase samples for your reflections are r.raytracing.reflections.maxbounces and you would set this to how many bounces you want. The more bounces you do, the more light is gonna be bouncing around the scene, the longer it's gonna take to render. So a good rule of thumb is like, four four is a good start the second console variable that you'll need is the same thing except we're going to change max bounces to samples per pixel so i'm just going to take this one and copy it then paste it then go to the end backspace out and then do samples per pixel now console variables are case sensitive so you'd have to make sure that it matches exactly like this fortunately with unreal 5.3 there is a little preview of what the console variable should be whenever you start typing so make sure that you type it in and then select whatever you need with the correct spaces so with these console variables added the last thing I should mention is that the samples per pixel in the scene right now we're set to one in the post process volume, but the console variables will overwrite that. And instead we could set this to like 32. This will slow down your render pretty substantially. This scene that I rendered without any samples, without any console variables took me about 30 seconds to render, not bad for a 10 second scene. But this clip that I rendered with more samples and bounces at 4K took about 30 minutes to an hour. I don't quite remember, but either way, adding the console variables did increase the render time substantially from a very short window of like a couple minutes to 30 seconds, etc., to much longer. 
So that is my reflection settings in Unreal Engine 5 using the post-process volume. We're not gonna talk about the path tracer today because it's a much more in-depth topic. I hope you learned something for this real-time reflections rendering thing for your workflow. I hope this was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comment section down below. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. And I will leave you with the final tip. And that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you'll make some gains. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.